Military technology keeps advancing at an incredible rate. If you think back to World War II and see the weapons compared to today's weapons, it's simply mind-boggling just how far advanced things are becoming. And from the looks of it, warfare is poised to become more dangerous than it ever was. From drones in the sky, drone tanks fitted with incredible weaponry, to small unmanned aircraft that are launched from carriers in the sky, security clearance has been granted. Check out these insane secret military weapons. Russia's Nuclear Tsunami Apocalypse Torpedo, Poseidon You might have heard of Russia's new weapon which was called Status 6 or Canyon. It was once thought that the weapon was a hoax until researchers tracked the development of the system which began in 2008. The torpedo was renamed Poseidon after the Russian military pulled the public for a new name, although some say it should have been called the worst weapon ever. The Poseidon is said to have the ability to nuke entire coastal cities into oblivion and can trigger giant tsunamis. It is the largest torpedo ever built measuring a ridiculous 65 feet long and it's 6.5 feet in diameter. This torpedo is designed to make long treks across entire oceans before detonating a massive 100 megaton thermonuclear warhead against a coastal enemy target. That's twice the explosive power of the SAR bomber, but some say that the weapon could only have a 2 megaton warhead. Still, plenty of power to destroy a coastal city. The weapon is so big that it needs its own special submarine, but there could also be special capsules made to launch them from. Russia is also claiming that the torpedo could be used to attack enemy fleets and is estimated to be capable of speeds up to 70 knots which translates to 80 miles per hour on land. That's faster than any U.S. nuclear-powered attack submarines and their anti-ship homing torpedoes, limiting a defender's options against an incoming Poseidon torpedo. The weapon also operates at depths of up to 3,280 feet, far deeper than U.S. Navy submarines. Drones recharged by a laser could fly forever. The Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency has developed a drone that has solar panels that are built into the wings and batteries in the fuselage. The batteries provide the power, but as they begin to drain, drone operators aim a laser beam at the solar panels which recharges the batteries. This means that the drone could stay in the air forever as long as there is an operator to charge it. This sounds cool, but there are a few problems with it. For one, a laser loses its strength the farther it has to travel and can be obscured or even blocked by smoke, haze, fog, and rain. Yeah, we know our viewers are smart, so we thought to mention that. DARPA figures it can recharge the drone at up to 6.8 miles, but that maximum will vary under real-world conditions. DARPA calls their drone the Silent Falcon, which could fly for weeks and complete a mission without ever having the need to land. China's Giant Ionosphere Zapping Radar This weapon developed by the Chinese is described as a high-powered incoherent scatter radar and is supposed to bounce radio waves off the Earth's high-altitude layers of charged gas called the ionosphere. The Chinese facility will be similar to United States HARP in many ways which had a bunch of conspiracy theories surrounding it, including government-sanctioned weather control, human-made earthquakes and tsunamis, and was said to be able to cause mental disruption throughout a region. The Chinese facility is on the densely populated island of Hainan, beside Sanya, a beachside city bigger than Miami or Honolulu with more than 400,000 inhabitants. Despite all these conspiracy theories, it is said that it could be possible the system could blank out ELF communications and selectively interfere with other satellite communications that would severely affect any submarine operations in the South China Sea. China could even use the new array as a transmitter for ELF radar to detect submarines at long range. Project Thor Although this project has some limitations with our current technology, it's something that is still on the table. We're talking about a weaponized meteor strike. In the 1950s, a Boeing operations researcher by the name of Jerry Pornell envisioned a weapon system armed not with conventional munitions or chemical explosives, but massive rods forged from the heavy metal 
tungsten, which would be dropped from suborbital heights. It was called Project Thor, but others named it Rods from God. Weapons researchers referred to it as a kinetic energy projectile, a super-dense, super-fast projectile that destroys everything in its path. Imagine a 2,000-pound, 20-foot-long and 1-foot-thick tungsten rod about the size of a telephone pole dropped on a target from space and reaching sound barrier-breaking speeds. It would be capable of penetrating hundreds of feet into the Earth's crust, and the destruction would be the equivalent of a nuclear blast, but without the fallout. But it has its problems because boosting enough of these into space would be very costly and each rod itself would cost $600,000. But there is a rumor that the Pentagon is still looking at this weapon. Juliet Marine Systems Ghost The Ghost is an advanced supercavitating stealth ship that reduces hull friction to 1 900th that of conventional watercraft. The Ghost uses a gyro-stabilized dual pontoon supercavitating hull that can run at top speeds through 10-foot waves. Called the Small Water Plain Area Twin Hull, or SWATH, it is controlled by 22 computer-controlled underwater control surfaces. When at rest or moving slowly, the Ghost sits in the water on its centerline module. At 8 knots or faster, the high-grade marine aluminum buoyant hulls lift the vessel and achieve full stability. Propulsion on the prototype is provided by T-53-703 turboshaft engines and can achieve speeds over 30 knots, but could be capable of 50 knots. It can perform several different missions including anti-surface warfare, anti-submarine warfare, and mine countermeasures. Armament consists of the M197 20mm rotary cannon and launch tubes that expel exhaust downward between the struts of the swath holes concealing and dissipating the thermal signature of the launch of BGM-176B Griffin missiles and advanced precision kill weapon system rockets. The Ghost has a crew of three to five sailors and can be dismantled to fit in the C-17 Globemaster III for transport. Each Ghost ship costs around $10 million to produce, a drop in the bucket for comparative military vessels. Sea Dragon Weapon the U.S. Navy and an unknown defense contractor are working on a new missile the service says will give its submarines a new disruptive offensive capability to take on enemy ships. It's called the Sea Dragon, but no one is really sure what it is because it's top secret. However, it is known that the missile uses some current technology and could be the SM-6, which is designed to be launched by U.S. Navy Arleigh Burke-class destroyers and Ticonderoga-class cruisers to defend the fleet from cruise missiles, manned aircraft, unmanned aircraft, and even short-range ballistic missiles. The missile's only drawback is, originally designed to shoot down flying targets, it has a fairly small blast fragmentation warhead. The SM-6 is supersonic and can fly at 3.5 times the speed of sound, or about 2,685 miles an hour. It also has the fun trick of taking targeting data from other Navy assets, including the E-2D Advanced Hawkeye Airborne Early Warning and Control Aircraft and the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter. So imagine a missile that can be fired from a ship and then controlled by a fighter jet and then directed to hit its target. Kalashnikov Drone Tank Military drones are on the rise, and many of you are probably familiar with the unmanned U.S. Predator drones that are equipped with advanced targeting systems and can carry 500-pound bombs and deliver those weapons to the target accurately. With this in mind, it would seem logical that ground-based drones, such as the Kalashnikov Drone Tank, would be the next-generation weapon to enter warfare. Russia's Euron-9 combat drone packs some serious firepower. With one 30mm 2A72 automatic cannon and four 9M120-1 Attica anti-tank guided missiles, it is 16.7 feet long and weighs approximately 10 tons. It may look impressive, but it had trouble with the fundamentals, not only of armored warfare, but warfare by remote control. 
The remote control combat vehicle lost contact with ground control stations only 1,000 to 1,600 feet from its manned control station, suffered from an unreliable gun and suspension system, and could not target enemies while on the move. The remote fire control system is also a problem, with the 2A72 experiencing a lag before firing six times and an outright failure once. The drone tank was first tested in Syria, and despite its failures, could be a weapon that Russia continues to develop. Tank Killing Quadcopter Drone The armed forces of Belarus have demonstrated a new quadcopter drone that can carry a tank-killing rocket launcher which carries an RPG-26 single-shot rocket that is remotely fired by the drone operator. While the drone is of questionable effectiveness as a tank destroyer, it is a deadly harbinger of things to come on the unmanned battlefield. The type of drone is unknown, but the design appears to be a quadcopter capable of lifting at least 7 pounds. But the RPG it can carry has a range of about 250 yards, and the warhead it has can penetrate a 1.7-foot thick plate of rolled homogeneous steel armor, which is the standard metric for armor plating. However, the RPG-26 can't penetrate enough armor to take out an American M1 Abrams main battle tank at least not head-on anyway, and it probably can't penetrate the M1's flank armor either, but a rocket-firing drone could conceivably maneuver to shoot at the top or rear of a tank, where armor is thinnest. The Belarusian tank drone is the start of what could become a very uncomfortable trend for Western tankers. Iron Curtain With the name of Iron Curtain, you might think this is a secret Russian military weapon, but it's not. The U.S. Army is testing a system designed to protect military vehicles smaller than tanks from attacks. This Iron Curtain uses a combination of sensors and downward-firing projectiles to stop incoming rockets and missiles from striking vehicles by setting off their shaped charge warheads before making contact with its target. With the Iron Curtain installed, the vehicle is surrounded with radar and optical sensors. The outward-looking radar picks up any incoming missiles as they approach, while the optical sensors spot it in milliseconds before impact and trigger the downward-firing interceptors. The U.S. Army tested the Iron Curtain back in 2013, and it apparently got a perfect score. So, it's been tested against rocket-propelled grenades, but how it fared against anti-tank missiles remains top secret. Gremlins Aircraft Carriers The idea of an aircraft carrier that operates in the air is not a new idea. And aside from the fictional flying aircraft carrier, the Helicarrier, which appeared in the American comic books published by Marvel Comics, it would seem that this is an impossible feat. But not so fast. The Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency has selected defense contractor Dynetics to develop a small unmanned aircraft which can be launched from any warplane and even recovered in mid-air. These small aircraft are codenamed Gremlins and are tiny, dangerous armed drones which are reusable and reconfigurable. The Gremlins could be launched from the rails of an F-16, the internal weapons bay of a B-1B bomber, or out the cargo ramp of a C-130 transport. Once the drones have accomplished their mission, they will rendezvous with the C-130 Hercules that lowers a capture device. The gremlins are then hooked, powered off, and then hauled aboard the aircraft. They can be quickly refurbished, refueled, perhaps receive an armament swap, and then be ready for another mission within 24 hours. If anything, it's a very similar concept to the Protoss carrier in the game StarCraft. Carrier has arrived. The United States military is the most formidable in the world, and all four branches are regularly doing research and development into the next generation of military weaponry. Weapons of war have become exponentially more technologically advanced over the last century, and it can be mind-boggling to see just how far we've come since the days of biplanes and rifles. With any good fortune, the most powerful of these weapons will never have to be deployed during an actual conflict, but it can give us a sense of security to know that our armed forces have them at their disposal should the need arise. These are the 10 deadliest weapons that are currently part of the arsenal of the United States military. The 
Active Denial System, or ADS, is technically meant to be a non-lethal weapon, but as with most weapons of this type, it can absolutely be quite deadly if not used properly. The ADS doesn't fire any projectiles. It's a directed energy weapon, which might sound like something out of science fiction, but the vehicle-mounted ADS has been in use for a decade, and it's easy to see why it's earned the sinister nicknames Heat Ray or Pain Ray. It works somewhat similarly to a microwave oven, which should tell you all you need to know about this weapon's potential for causing serious damage. The ADS emits a person-sized beam of millimeter waves, a type of electromagnetic radiation. The beam is invisible, but if you're in its path, you'll know it immediately. It produces a strong burning sensation, which only gets stronger the longer a subject is exposed to it. Stick around long enough and you'll feel like you're about to burst into flames, which makes the ADS pretty effective for crowd dispersal. While the ADS is generally mounted to ground vehicles, a 2011 redesign allowed it to be operated from a moving aircraft, and the Navy has also experimented with mounting the units to gunships. The Avenger Defense System is a lightweight, extremely portable surface-to-air missile deployment system, typically mounted on the backs of combat vehicles. It has a sophisticated infrared targeting system that allows it to find its targets during day or night, in any and all weather conditions. They're usually deployed with a cache of Stinger missiles, but in 2008, the Avenger system got an upgrade. Manufacturer Boeing has long been experimenting with what could accurately be described as a laser cannon, and the newest version of the Avenger, appropriately dubbed the Laser Avenger, integrates a directed energy laser weapon with the Avenger's standard kinetic energy energy-based weapons. A real-life laser cannon might seem a little far out, but the device has undergone successful testing. In 2009, the Laser Avenger was able to successfully track three unmanned aerial vehicles during a test and shoot one of them down using only its laser. Obviously, this device is likely to see other applications in the near future, but it's interesting to know that the military currently possesses actual laser guns capable of tracking and shooting objects out of the sky, and that such weapons are no longer exclusively in the realm of sci-fi. The M3E1 is simply the latest iteration of the Carl Gustav, a lightweight anti-armor system which was first developed by its namesake inventor in 1946. While it looks like nothing so much as a rocket launcher, it's actually technically a recoilless rifle, albeit one that fires a variety of massive 84mm rounds, which are expressly designed to penetrate a tank's armor. The weapon is capable of being operated by just one soldier, but an additional soldier usually tags along to carry ammunition and reload. It's equipped with both fixed iron and optical sights, and can also be used in conjunction with an image intensification system for operation at night. The latest version, produced in 2017, is capable of firing a multitude of different rounds and can be equipped with an intelligent targeting system and programmable ammunition. It's also shorter, lighter, and more ergonomically designed than earlier models. Tanks have been a part of warfare for over a hundred years, and for as long as they have been deployed, opposing forces have grappled with ways to take them down. With at least one M3E1 fielded to every infantry squad, deploying them against U.S. military forces just got a lot riskier. The C-130 cargo plane has long been a staple of the U.S. Armed Forces, but this model was designed for more than just hauling cargo. The Lockheed AC-130, also known by the names of its variants Spectre, Spooky, Stinger II, and Ghost Rider, isn't going to be flying any solo missions. It's too big and slow of a target, and the fact that it has an unpressurized cabin means that it can only fly at a comparatively low altitude. But with proper support, it becomes a nightmare for opposing ground forces, because this is one big, slow target which happens to be armed to the teeth. The AC-130 doesn't strafe its targets like many gunships. Instead, it performs a pylon turn during an attack, essentially moving in a circle over its target while unloading its formidable cache of ammo. The standard model is equipped with one L60 Bofors 40mm cannon and one 105mm M102 howitzer. The spooky model also features one 25mm equalizer cannon with an improved firing system and increased ammunition capacity. These gunships have been providing close air support for U.S. operations for over 50 years, and they have a sterling combat record, having been deployed as far back as the Vietnam War, and as recently as the current conflict with ISIS. And with modifications and revisions ongoing, the stars of America's gunship arsenal are only primed to get deadlier. The MK-19 was developed during the Vietnam conflict, but the first design was deemed too unsafe to use in the field. It took significant revisions for the unit to eventually be adopted by the U.S. Army in 1983, but it's remained in service ever since. The most succinct way to describe the MK-19? Picture a machine gun in full operation. Now, imagine it's firing grenades. Yes, the unit is a belt-fed, 40mm, fully automatic grenade launcher, which fires at a rate of up to 60 rounds. And again, by rounds, we mean actual grenades per minute. It has a ridiculous range of 60 
1,600 to 2,400 yards, can be fired from a vehicle mount or a tripod, and is equipped with a flash suppressor, not for concealing the unit's position during nighttime operation, but for protecting the eyesight of its operator. It's an extremely versatile weapon. Hovering enemy helicopters, armored vehicles, and enemy bunkers are just a few of the targets the MK-19 is capable of taking out. Its rounds can pierce two-inch thick armor, and they produce fragments which would kill or wound any personnel within a 15-meter radius of impact. The unit is every bit as devastating as one would expect the Union of Machine Gun and Grenade Launcher to be, and in addition to the U.S., they're employed by nearly 30 allies around the globe. It might look like a mini tank, but it's actually something much scarier, an armed robotic soldier. The MARS, or Modular Advanced Armed Robotic System, isn't fully autonomous. It does require an operator, but as the platform was designed primarily for surveillance and reconnaissance, it can handle just about any terrain that a human soldier can, and it packs just as much firepower. The MARS is equipped with seven cameras so that its operator can monitor potential threats coming from any direction, and of course they can be switched to infrared mode for nighttime operations. The unit has a 360-degree rotating turret outfitted with an M240B machine gun and four grenade launcher tubes, and it packs one grenade for each tube, along with 450 rounds of ammo. It can cruise along at up to 7 miles per hour and can travel up to 1,000 meters from its handler. The unit can be modified for non-combat purposes. These systems can include a loudspeaker, a laser dazzler, a siren, or a manipulator arm capable of lifting 120 pounds. It's a truly unique and versatile system, and of course each one deployed to the field means fewer human lives at risk. The Nimitz-class aircraft carrier, named for World War II United States Pacific Fleet Admiral Chester W. Nimitz, has done more to advance the cause of peace than nearly any other weapon of war in history. There are ten of them active around the world, each of them powered by twin A-4W nuclear reactors, which literally give them unlimited range. As the name implies, the Nimitz-class carriers are capable of delivering up to 70 aircraft, any and all of which may be equipped with free-fall nuclear weapons anywhere around the globe. The presence of these craft serves as a strong nuclear deterrent. As they are able to deploy a fighting force of nuclear-equipped bombers to locations around the world at a moment's notice. But they're not the most important part of that equation. When it comes to striking fear into the hearts of America's enemies, even the mighty Nimitz class is outclassed by a weapon that is also used in conjunction with a different vessel, which could be seen as the pride of the U.S. Navy. The Trident II is simply the most powerful and reliable missile in the arsenals of both the U.S. and U.K. Designed to be launched from a submarine, the Trident is a three-stage rocket with a dazzling range of 4,230 nautical miles while carrying a full payload. It's considered to be an essential component of U.S. nuclear deterrence as they're capable of hitting their targets with nearly as high a degree of accuracy as land-based missiles and are every bit as devastating. The Trident has been in service both in the U.S. and U.K. since 1990, but it's not a standalone system. The marvels of modern warfare in which they are housed can be placed strategically at virtually any location with very little notice, and they are key to ensuring that nuclear-equipped enemies think very, very carefully before considering that most dire of options. The Ohio-class submarine is the largest ever built for the U.S. military, designed to carry out deterrent patrols around the world. Each one is armed with up to two dozen Trident II missiles, with each one of those equipped with a dozen multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicles, each of which carries its own warhead. Do the math, and you'll see that each Ohio-class submarine is loaded with enough nuclear firepower to level an entire country in very little time, and the United States has 18 of them. These boats represent possibly the most important part of the U.S. nuclear triad, with the other two being land-based missiles and nuclear bombers. Simply put, a first nuclear strike by an enemy against the U.S. stands a decent chance of wiping out a good portion of our missile and bomber arsenal. But Ohio submarines are designed for stealth, making them very difficult to locate and track. With these subs patrolling the international waters, initiating a nuclear strike against the United States would basically amount to suicide. And it's worth noting that the U.K., one of our staunchest allies, has two dozen nuclear subs of its own, also equipped with Trident II's. Nuclear weapons are terrifying, and anyone who values life on Earth, which really should be all of us, sincerely hopes that they will never be used again. Decades of non-proliferation on the part of the U.S. and Russia have severely decreased the number of nukes in service. But of course, those that remain have the power to destroy the entire world dozens of times over. Hostile nations such as Iran and North Korea have insisted that they too have a right to carry a big stick, so to speak. But when it comes to sheer destructive power, the U.S. carries the biggest stick of any nation on Earth. This would be the B-83, a nuclear warhead with a downright 
outright excessive amount of destructive power. Designed to be dropped from a bomber, the B-83 yields an unbelievable 1.2 megatons of explosive energy. That is the equivalent of 1,200,000 tons of TNT. To put this in perspective, that's about 80 times more powerful than the bomb dropped on Hiroshima near the end of World War II, making it easily the most powerful free-fall weapon in the entire U.S. arsenal. Have any suggestions for things we missed over the course of the video? Let us know in the comment section. We'd love to hear from you. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like, share with friends, and subscribe to Top Trending for more regular countdown videos such as this one.